Well, hi, everybody. It's John Ells again. Welcome back to It's a Great Day to Serve the Lord. And today we are going to follow up on what we started last week and have the second part of the dominant thought idea. So last week we, we introduced this idea of the dominant thought, which comes from behavioral study. And the dominant thought revolves around how we speak to ourselves, our internal talk, and then to others, how we relate to others. The dominant thought reveals what behavior we're going to lean toward. And so uh, I um, used the example last week that if a coach in baseball, if a coach went up to the pitcher uh, before the next batter came up and said, hey, whatever you do, don't throw that ball high and outside. What's the pitcher invariably going to do? He's going to throw it high and outside. The very thing the coach didn't want him to do became the dominant thought, and that's what he leaned toward. That's what his mind told him to do. He didn't want to do that, but he did it because that was the dominant thought. So uh, last week, in relationship to this, we talked about how the dominant thought um, kind of uh, determines how we live and how we work. It's, it's how that controls our work life and our life in general. And if you haven't watched last week, you really need to go back and watch that to get the full context of this message. So uh, what we focus in on, the dominant thought, is essentially what we're going to get. It's the direction we're going to go in, what we're going to lean toward, the behaviors that we're going to exhibit. That comes from our dominant thought. And uh, God tells us in Scripture what he wants our dominant thoughts to be, what he wants our behaviors to be like, since our dominant thought will determine our behavior. So this week, a very important week, because I want to talk about how to use this idea, use the dominant thought idea, to break down the barriers of communication that we have in our culture, in our world, in our work today, and our interactions with, it, with others. And uh, if you get this, it'll change your life. If you get this, it'll change the life of the people that you interact with. It is that powerful. I'm going to simply use what's known as the fruit of the Spirit from Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. And it goes like this. But, of the, fruit, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, peace. Patience, forbearance, um, which is also patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. My friends, in our culture today, I think, and you will agree, we have an interaction problem. Um, it's getting up to be a problem. There, there are building up in our culture uh, increasing degrees of hatred and polarization between people, between people groups. And um, I want us to consider this. If our dominant thought was based on the fruit of the Spirit, what would happen? Now, uh, we got to notice one thing. It's, a, it's, a, it's a kind of a very subtle thing about the fruit of the Spirit. I don't know if you ever notice this or not, but it's about being, not doing. Uh, you can't, for example, do love, but you can be loving, right? You can't do joy, but you can be joyful. Uh, being has to do with uh, how we be, <laughs> how we are, has to do with our thinking what we meditate on, our praying, and letting the Holy Spirit invade our hearts to exude these things. It becomes natural then. What do you think would happen if each day we looked at our focus list, if we had a focus list, and this became our dominant thought list, if the fruit of the Spirit became our focus or dominant thought list, and we asked ourselves at the end of every day, watch this, to love each other as Christ has called us to love. And our internal subconscious says, our self-talk says, have I showed the love of Jesus in my interactions today? To be joyful. 
Has my joy in the Lord shown through today? To focus in on peace, the kind of peace that passes understanding. It's a supernatural peace. Has my focus been on God's sovereign control? Because believe me, if you focus on God's control, you'll have peace. Patience, or another word is forbearance. It's the idea that we bear with forbearance, bear with others through their issues, their trials, and their struggles in life. And we ask ourselves internally at the end of the day, have I hung in there with others, those around me that are struggling? To be kind, kindness. Have I been kind or harsh or callous with others today? To exude goodness, have I simply been good to others today? To show faithfulness or to be faithful this is about doing what we're saying we're going to do. It's about following through. Have I followed through with that thing I told somebody I was going to do? To show gentleness. This isn't weakness or fluff, this gentleness idea. This is about knowing who you're talking to and their personality. And so our self-talk would be, our question would be, have I considered the personality of the people that I'm talking to in my conversation? Self-control. Now watch this. This isn't about us, actually. It's about holding back judgment, holding back condemnation, holding back and controlling our anger, basically controlling our tongue. And we ask ourselves at the end of the day, have I controlled my emotions in relationship to the people I've interact with it, interacted with today? Isn't this powerful? This is powerful stuff. Dear friend, I appeal to you. I think it's clear. God wants our focus to be on the attitudes and behaviors that glorify him, that bring healing to broken relationships, that calm the storms of life, that provide opportunities uh, to love others as Jesus would have us love them. Isn't that great? Now, friends... I'm excited to tell you, uh, I want to help you uh, kind of put the rubber to the road on this thing. And so I've created a very basic, very simple fruit of the spirit behavior builder. It's, that's all it is. It's a card with the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control with a Monday through Friday on it with a calendar on it, and all you have to do at the end of every day or maybe the beginning of the, of the next day, you ask ourselves, did I show the love of Jesus in my interactions? And so on. And I guarantee you, if you focus in on this, if this becomes your dominant thought, it will have an, a, a reciprocal effect that you can't anticipate. It's gonna be powerful because Jesus Christ is, through his Holy Spirit, is working on your heart to exude these things in a natural way. And so, uh, for now, anyway, I'm going to offer to anyone that makes a donation of any kind, I will send you a 12-pack of the Fruit of the Spirit Behavior Builder. Uh, I'm going to probably have to, you know, email you uh, in response and get your um, address. But for a donation of any kind right now, I will send you this Fruit of the Spirit Behavior Builder, a 12-pack that will get you through 12 weeks of investing the, Holy, the, the, the Fruit of the Spirit in your life and letting the Holy Spirit work. And I guarantee you, it'll change your life and it'll change others. Well, God bless you and remember, it's a great day to serve the Lord.